with Steve Rappaport, and we're at Real Time New York, and he's going to give us a little bit of a quick snapshot of what he went over in his panel. There's a recognition that listening information, whether it's an insight or, uh, or a data point, is not just to be used in a silo in a marketing department or a PR department or a customer service department, but that this data or information has application throughout the enterprise. And so, uh, and so one of the challenges that everyone talked about was breaking the silos down. Not only showing people that listening information was valuable, but getting people from different departments or functions or business units to just talk with one another. So there was a lot of good advice about how to do that. And, uh, and the fellow from Kellogg was especially um, verbal on that point, you know, because he had actually mapped out all the all the flows, all the interconnections, all the interrelationships of the departments centered around the sharing of listening data. So there's a lot of discussion about that, and it's seen as one of the real priorities. Right. So the good discussion on how do you make listening data and contribute to the enterprise and create value for the organization as a whole. The second was, and I was very encouraged by this, was um, that that in in the early early days of listening and engagement, when it was really strictly not strictly but often used for customer service, um, you know, it all became about engagement and turning people into brand advocates, which is really just kind of a mass model, mass media model of advertising. So instead of you know broadcasting it through a TV show, it's like I'm going to turn you into my ad, right? And that you'll go on and tell someone else. And these very, um, I say, um, naive interpretations of what's called influencer theory. And I was really encouraged to hear that uh, that while some of that still goes on and will always go on, it's just that people are really looking at listening to contributing to R and D to product development, to uh, corporate social responsibility, and all sorts of areas where it's not about turning someone into a mouthpiece, but it's really about bringing the voice and the understanding of your customers and prospects into the organization and acting upon that and taking that as guidance. And that I found very, very exciting. It's a behavioral, it's a fundamental behavioral change within the organization that they have to embrace that kind of... Yeah, well, yeah, and and uh, to the earlier point <clears throat> about breaking down the silos, um, I made uh, one of my moderator points, which was, yeah, that all sounds great, no. you know, great, because you can have like a great PowerPoint, and you can have lines and flowcharts and thick lines and dotted lines and squiggly lines and all, you know, things in boxes and shadows, but um, but people work together when they trust one another and they have a relationship with one another. And that's what it's really going to take for listening to really be embraced organizationally, right. is that people within the organization not only have to break down the silos, they have to learn and respect and work with one another and really develop close working relationships because there's a level of trust that is absolutely required to work with this information and knowledge. And the reason that trust is required is that sometimes what you hear is not what the party line is. It may be very different from that. And so to be able to hear things that are not, that, that are opposite to what you think, challenge what you think, maybe even challenge your job, right? You need a lot of trust for that. And so building relationships and internal bridges and conduits, extremely important. So those lines have to be relationship lines, not just lines on a PowerPoint. Okay. So tell us about your book. Well, thank you. Um, the book uh, called Listen First, Turning Social Media Conversations into Business Advantage was just published by Wiley in mid-April. And this is my second Wiley book. The first one was called The Online Advertising Playbook. And the reaction and the reception that this book is getting has just absolutely floored me. Um, I never expected it to get the kind of attention that it's getting. And, and what I find so interesting is that the kinds of people who are asking me to talk, like I'm leaving this afternoon for a talk at a major consumer products company, uh, I'm invited to speak to their R&D department. 
not the marketing department, not the sales department. Well then, so it's starting to happen. It is. So it's, it's starting to happen. That's great. Yeah. The book itself answers four questions. What is listening? How is it done? How is it used? And where is it going? Okay, that's great. Well, thank you again. Oh, it's my pleasure. For taking thank you. the time yeah. to share all this great information, and uh, we'll we'll keep tabs on you. Your next book, how this book is doing. Thank you. Yeah. And, and people can find the book online. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, as as Wiley says, wherever books and ebooks are sold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great.